Hey guys, TKC here, the Kaijudo channel, and this week, well, not enough news to talk about. So this video is not going to be dedicated to Kaijudo news. I'm just going to be talking about the top 10 cards from Shattered Alliances based on the performance of the cards in the KMCs this past season. Now before I get to that, there is one really important piece of news that I do want to talk about, and that is streaming at the Winter Championship. So a lot of people weren't really happy with the fact that they weren't able to watch the first championship live. So I said, okay, why not? Let's do it. We're going to do coverage for the Winter Championships. Awesome stuff. And on the website, they actually listed a breakdown of stuff they're going to cover on this live stream. So I'm going to go ahead and list them all right now. First of all, they're going to have video coverage of the panel session with the Kaijiro team on Saturday. So that means that not only the people who are present are going to be able to see the panel, but everyone around the world who is going to be watching the stream will also be able to see the awesome stuff that WotC has to tell us about, you know, new stuff. Then after that, the Last Chance Qualifiers are going to be going on, but I don't believe they're going to be streaming the Last Chance Qualifiers. At the end of the day, they're at least going to summarize, you know, the highlights of all the LCQs, you know, basically say, who got invited, uh, what decks were they using, and etc, etc. Then on Sunday, of course, is going to be the championships. So during the championships, they're going to do player interviews and deck techs, uh, kind of like what they did with the uh, Wizards Kaijudo YouTube page, and I guess on the website as well. Uh, Carl Reddish helped a lot for uh, deck techs, and uh, there were also some player interviews going on too, but they kind of summarized that into a little like highlight video in a way for Saturday and Sunday. So at least now it's going to be live and there's going to be interviews and deck techs and a bunch of stuff. In addition to that, they're also going to be posting the standings of the Kaijudo Championships every round. And every round, just like they did with the first championships, they'll be doing a feature match every single round. But this time they're going to be displaying it live for all to see. Last time around, there were, you know, a little bit of technical difficulties and they were only able to post like two matches on their YouTube channel, which is kind of unfortunate, but oh well. But this time, you know, there shouldn't be any mistakes. Uh, hopefully they'll be testing out all the streaming and stuff like that and they'll be able to show all the feature matches live and maybe with commentary as well. And then lastly, once the championships are done, they're going to be, you know, live streaming the award ceremony uh, for the people who got first, second, I guess third and fourth and stuff like that. So that's going to be really cool to watch. And of course, if you follow them on Twitter and like their Facebook page, you'll also be able to see some other stuff like photos and maybe some other videos on the side and stuff like that. So all in all, very, very excited about this. I know I'm going to be there in person, but I know a lot of people want to see what's going on for themselves, for the people who can't go so um, it's gonna be really really exciting and I can't wait so with that all out of the way let's go to the nitty-gritty of this video and that is the top 10 Shattered Alliances cards from the KMC's. So starting at number 10, we're gonna go with Twilight Archon. So this card was kind of like really overrated at first. I thought it was gonna be really insane, but overall it did, you know, decent. Uh, it kind of showed up in a lot of Haven Control lists and it showed up in Panopter decks as well. But Twilight Archon, you know, very crazy effect, you know, locking a creature instantly. And then every time you cast a spell, boom, you get rid of a tap creature on your opponent's side of the field. So a lot of decks were kind of built around this, uh, you know, the Panopters, the Havens, and all that stuff. Really, really exciting card, and that's why it deserves the 10th spot on this list. Coming in at number 9 is Kivu Ingenious Shaman. This card is absolutely awesome. This is the first card of its kind, basically the first card to actually be able to get anything back from your mana zone, which is really, really important because if you mana something, you know, really expensive that you need, or, you know, even like Shield Blast sometimes, like Terra Pit Root Trap, Kivu just gets the job done. At the same time, you're even wrapping yourself to replace the card you took, so it's absolutely awesome. It doesn't like ruin your tempo. You keep your mana the same way it always was, but you get the card you need. And in addition to all of that, it's also a double breaker. So overall, this card is very, very efficient, uh, mainly used in Haven Control List, but I believe it's popped up in some other things like some uh, Huda Big Stuff decks, which is kind of like a, a Cordia Kurigar ramp monstrosity thing uh, that I talked about a while ago. That's in there as well. Uh, so overall, Kivu, awesome spirit totem, really good card. Coming in at number 8 is Wild Strider Ramnoth. So for all you people complaining that nature isn't getting anything good, well, Ramnoth is, you know, an example of a really, really efficient nature creature. This card is, you know, one of the main reasons why Haven Control is doing so well. You know, it's just a body with a double breaker that, you know, consistently ramps you over and over and over again as long as it doesn't get banished by things like, you know, Terror Pit or Root Trap or things like that. But since it comes down um, 
But since it's a level 6, and you probably have some other ramp cards in there as well, like Full Metal Lemon, Sprout, Reap and Sow, things like that, it will get on the field earlier than, you know, turn 6, so it'll probably be turn 4, turn 5, and usually there isn't, you know, much to deal with that on turn 5, except for, like, maybe bounce creatures, like Rusalka, or maybe even Grip of Despair, um, so things like that. And so Ramnoth, you know, was really key in getting to that 10 mana, which is really important so you get your Haven out, or get your Andromeda out, or whatever you want. Ramnoth is just really good for that kind of purpose. It's just to get into the late game as quick as you can, and then boom, you just finish your opponent off. Coming in at number 7 is Queen Kalima, the Darkness Monarch. Really crazy stuff. I would have put this higher if a lot more Kalima decks were being played, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. Kalima, you know, kind of really didn't do much for the first half of the season, and then like later on, boom, it just started becoming popular and realizing how good Kalima could be. So um, I guess you could also include Mark of Kalima into this kind of seventh place as well. It's a similar effect, but basically, you know, you throw this into a mono dark list, mostly mono, you usually use light or nature, uh, multi sieves that pair it with darkness so that you're, you have a 100% chance of hitting your Kalima at 3 darkness and your Mark of Kalima at 2 darkness. I use Kalima myself at the KMC I went to, uh, I got top 8 with it, so did my friend, and you know, it just kept on getting a lot of good performances after that, so Kalima, very very crazy card, but unfortunately it doesn't beat Haven on this list, but still, at the 7th slot, very very great card. In 6th place we have Blinder Beetle Prime, the best evolution from this set, and a very very good evolution for the Light Civilization in general, probably the best one in my opinion. It completely got rid of Halon from the Mono Light deck, it's using a lot of other decks as well, uh, it's even used in control sometimes to kind of combat, you know, the aggressive decks. You just kind of evolve your Aqua Strider or your Rain Cloud Kraken or, you know, any sort of enforcer like that and boom, you're, you're counter swinging, you tap one of their guys and then you attack, you tap another guy and it's just, whoa, you're tapping a lot of things and getting rid of a lot of things and it's all in this nice cute level 5 double breaker with 6,000 power. All right, halfway done the list, now we're gonna go to number five, and that is Heretic Prince Varaka. This card is absolutely crazy. There's so many different things you could do with it, which is really cool. It's uh, like probably the only or maybe the best water-based dragon in a way. It has part water in its civilizations. It's also fire, of course. But Varaka is just used in so many different ways and, you know, a lot of different decks as well. It's mainly seen in the dragon core lists that use, like, Herald of Infernus and stuff like that. But sometimes it's even used in, you know, water, fire, nature strategies like Sabretooth. Uh, it's really good there. It kind of replaced Bolt Tail in that sense. Varaka is just really cool because it's basically either this big double-breaking Gila Flame that goes back to your hand every time or it's, you know, basically used to just plop it onto the field and then give your other things fast attack. So if you like play that along with some cheap birds or stuff like that, it's really cool. In addition to bouncing itself, you could also bounce other stuff instead. So you could bounce like Andromeda, Lyra, Squalache, Scourge. You can do some pretty crazy stuff with it. Coming in at number four is actually going to be Spire Puppet, believe it or not. Spire Puppet, despite its rarity, is an excellent card. This card pretty much replaced Fumes if you're already using Darkness and Light in your deck. It's just really crazy how good it is. It has the extra 500, which is pretty crucial in getting over some things. In addition to that, the discard effect on it is actually random and not, you know, your opponent chooses. This is something that's kind of new. It, this is the first time it's basically happened in the game. Kind of like Kivu, it's an effect that, you know, just recently got into the game and it's proven to be a very, very crazy card, especially when you go turn 3 Mesmerize, turn 4 Spire Puppet, and then they have like no hand if they went first and then you pretty much win the game from there. So of course, this card is mainly used in control decks, uh, especially Kalima and Haven decks. Really, really crazy. You could bring it back with Dracothane, discard some more cards, uh, bounce it yourself with Piercing Judgment, play it again, discard more cards. You could do so many things with Spire Puppet, and this is why it gets fourth place, because it's a very, very, very useful card. Now coming in at number three is another card I wouldn't have expected at all to be on this top 10 list, but that card is Lost Patrol, this level 3, 5,000 power common, it's a light darkness that does literally nothing. But, this card is really, really, really good. And Cyberlord Games actually proved that because they pioneered this light water darkness tempo deck that a lot of people have been calling it Lost Patrol Tempo just because it's so out there and strange, but it's, it's really strong. It's a level 3, 5,000, you know, 
Sword Horned is a 5,500, but because this card is light and darkness, it fits a lot better in this kind of list. You know, of course, Sword Horn's been seeing a lot of play in like Mega Bugs and you know other aggressive strategies like that, like Starseed uh, Smashers or uh, Leap of Faith or whatever that deck is called, Starseed. But Lost Patrol fits uh, the light water darkness deck a lot better. It gave light water darkness, you know, this big creature as well to fight a lot of things like Herald of Infernus. Uh, Laws, Neptis, you know, just get rid of big things, get over blockers and stuff like that. That's basically what it's there to do. Now, coming in at number two, this might be really, really shocking, but there's two more cards left, and one of them is Haven, and one of them is another card, but Haven, Eternal Haven itself, is going to be second place. What? Yes, Haven, I know, it's a very, very insane card but it's used in basically only two decks and you know it's done very very well it's very very insane of course haven control is basically its namesake it's a, just like kalima a very 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 powerful card uh, it's untargetable, it's a big blocker, 50,500, you power up all your light creatures, you draw cards when you attack, when you summon it, you summon blockers for free, you do basically everything you want with Haven, so it's it's absolutely, you know, insane. At least now, with Bottle of Wishes retired, you know, there's not going to be any more turn 2 Haven shenanigans, so Haven is, you know, going to be slightly worse not really that much worse because you know the whole deck didn't really rely on bottle too much it was just there because it needed to be there but you know people are just going to focus with ramp you know keep on going with the ramp theme and get haven out you know turn seven turn eight that's like the goal and then you just boom squatch a scourge and then you just go for game from there that's basically what you do with haven um but you know it dies to Kalima, it dies to a lot of things there's a lot of answers to it a lot of people have figured that out and so Haven is not, you know, the most busted thing ever, uh, but yeah, it gets second place, absolutely. Now coming in at number one, this card is probably my favorite from the whole set and is proven to be a very, very annoying card, and that is Cyber Scamp. Cyber Scamp is in so many different lists, I can't even count him on one hand, I don't think. It's in the Light Water Dark Tempo, it's in Mega Bugs, it's in, like, three different rush decks it's like all over the place this cyber scam card and that's because it's really really insane level 2 1000 power every time your opponent plays a spell you search your deck and you play another cyber scam and it's just really really annoying for you know the slower decks that need to play spells to get into the game you know it just completely annoys control and that's why you know cards like toxic fog and even like screeching scare adorable has been a lot more popular to just deal with this little bugger cyber scam very, very, very powerful and is used in like all the decks ever, so that's why it deserves the best card in Shattered Alliances. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this top 10 list. I haven't done a top 10 list in a very, very long time, but before I go, I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys a question. Since the set premiere of Invasion Earth was this weekend, uh, I just want to know what you guys did at your set premieres, how did you guys do, uh, what did you guys open in your booster boxes, things like that. As for me, I actually, you know, did pretty good at my set premiere, unfortunately. Not that many people this time around, it was a lot less people, a lot of people were busy with a lot of other things, but still I managed to go undefeated yet again. I don't know how I do it, uh, usually I'm very bad in sealed outside of tournaments, but once tournaments happen for sealed, I just surprisingly do really well and boom, I just... I don't know, I really don't know how to explain it, but Anime Expo, Shattered Alliances, and then uh, this one, Invasion Earth, I went 3-0 and all of them, uh, it's just... I, I don't know how to explain it. I guess I'm really lucky in tournaments for sealed, but I had a blast. Uh, I had General Charzone in my sealed, and I had Val Malvictus with Veil Slip. It was really funny, and uh, yeah, it was, it was very fun. I played Charzone at least like five, six times throughout the day. Really, really fun card, and I got a lot of Corrupteds too, so overall, really, really fun set, and I pulled some pretty awesome stuff too. I got two Colossuses, I got a Cassiopeia, and... You know, lots of cool stuff. So overall, Invasion Earth, really, really fun, really cool set. So I want to know what you guys think. This is TKC, the Kaijuo channel, signing off. See you later, guys.